Hello, hello, my beautiful badass babe. I have a very potent and powerful energetic transmission that wants to come through for you. This is something that I have heard very much so over the past four years, but for some reason over the past week, I have heard this expression more times than I can count on one hand from separate individuals. And so it was almost like my angels and guides being like, Kelly, here it is again. This is being shared with you again because you are meant to share this and express this with others so that they feel seen, heard in what they are going through and in their experience. And that is, I don't know who I am anymore. And so this has come through a lot over the past week or two weeks from one-on-one clients, from recent breakthrough sessions that I had, from my BBC members, from people who slide into my DM sharing this with me. And what I want to share with you is that when these women share this with me, I feel from them so much shame and so much guilt when they say, Kelly, honestly, like this is really embarrassing to say, or this is really shameful to say, but I don't know who I am anymore. And what I want to share with you is that that's not embarrassing. There's no shame there. Okay. So this is going to come through very potently and very powerful for you. If you have felt to an extent, to some degree or another, I don't know who I am anymore. That is okay. We're going to shift that today. And just so you know, you may be like, okay, like this makes me feel better. I thought I was the only one who felt this way. From those who I work with, this has stemmed from age range, 19 years old to 67, right? From those who I have heard this from and who have openly shared and expressed that with me. So I'm sharing this with you to let you know it's not an age thing. A lot of us are like, oh my God, maybe it's because I'm at this stage in my life. And that's where shame is tied to it. Cause we're like, oh no, I'm in my forties. I'm in my fifties. I'm in my sixties. I don't know who I am anymore. Or it's like, I'm 19 in college. I don't know who I am anymore. This feels so weird to me. Okay. So if you have been having that feeling, that thought in any way, shape or form, honor it hold yourself, maybe give yourself a loving hug right now. Okay. What I want to share with you is that it's not that you don't know who you are anymore. You know who you are deep down in your root, in the core essence of who you are and who you came here to be. That is an energetic frequency, a blueprint coding, like almost like an encoding in your soul. It's there. It has just been hidden, suppressed, shut down because this is so important. Somewhere along the way in your life, how you grew up, in your family, in your environment, with your friends, with your teachers, with people you surrounded yourself with, somewhere along the way, we took on other stories, beliefs, habits, thoughts, other people's perceptions of life as our own. And from there, we then heard or we learned, this is the programming, this is the conditioning. We learned how we should show up, how we should express ourselves in the world, how we should be a lady. (laughs) This one was big for me, I'll share in a second. How we should just be in our lives, right? And so from that learning from other people's perceptions of how we should show up, of how we should express ourselves. From there, we placed rules around how we have to or need to show up, how we have to or need to be, how we have to or need to express ourselves in our relationships, in our career, in our business, in our circles, in our households, in our roles, of life, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I want you to really reflect on is, hmm, am I showing up and expressing myself from a state of how I was taught 
to show up and express myself or am I truly showing up and expressing myself from my soul essence, from a place that feels really nourishing to me, that feels really potent and freeing and light for me, where I feel whole, where I feel fulfilled, where I feel complete, seen and heard and who I am. Right. So just reflect on that for a second, because for me, I was not showing up in my soul essence identity in who I truly am at my root, my core, my being, my frequency, my energetic encoding of who I am for so fucking long. Because to be honest, I didn't really know that that was a possibility. Oh, even saying that I feel like, holy shit. But I want to share that with you because if I didn't know that that was a possibility and you're here in my energy, in my world, then maybe you didn't know that was a possibility either. So because I was never taught or shown how to show up in my soul essence, the root, the core of who I am, I unknowingly was showing up in my safety identity to keep myself safe, right? To protect myself from fear of judgment, of criticism from others, from being bullied, being shamed, being told that I'm stupid, silly, weird, whatever it is, which all of those things I was called (laughs) in my life when I was showing up as who I am and who I came here to be, which then this is an example of what I was saying. This is how you place rules around how you're supposed to show up. So for example, for me, we would go to school field trips or just like random places. And I loved getting those tumbled rocks. I loved that. I thought that was so cool. My friends love that too. But then there was other kids who were like, why would you get these stupid rocks? That's so weird. That's so lame. Why would you get these dumb rocks? And then you're like, I don't know. I don't know why I would do this, right? So because you were doing something where you were following your curiosity, following your spiritual curiosity, following what felt really fucking good for you, And someone was like, that's stupid, that's weird, that's silly, you're dumb, who are you? Because those things happen, we then placed rules around, I need to show up in this way so that I'm not called weird, so that I'm not put down, so that I'm not made to be a fool, right? We literally placed rules and meanings around If I show up and express myself as who I truly am, then I'm going to be bullied, shamed, criticized, or judged. This was a rule that I placed around myself really just being who I am because I didn't want to feel that pain. And when you're younger, you're like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. This is so mean. I was just put down in public. That's like humiliating and that doesn't feel good. So I need to protect myself from these feelings, right? I didn't have the tools in place back then to support my feelings and emotions as I do now. So I then began to show up and operate out of my safety identity to be perceived in a certain way by others to protect myself. So you'll hear me talk about soul essence identity and safety identity, right? That's what I mean when I use those two components here. So what rules have you been placing around how you have been showing up and expressing yourself in your life, right? So what I want to share with you is that I know what it feels like to be deeply afraid to be my true self. I know what it feels like to have that mind chatter where it's like, oh God, are they going to think that I'm stupid? Are they going to think that I'm weird? Are they going to think that I'm not enough? Maybe I should try to be someone else to fit in. Maybe I should try harder. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should follow this path because this worked for someone else. Oh, let me try this. Oh, let me sign up for this. Oh, let me do this. (laughs) I know what it's like to have that constant mind chatter, which is rooted from fear, which is rooted and dripping in the energetic frequency of trying, searching, seeking, 
waiting, waiting to fit in, waiting to be seen and heard by others. And all I was doing was just second guessing myself, doubting myself, shooting all over my effing self. And I just had that, ugh, that like heaviness feeling, this frequency like in my aura of just like, who's going to judge me? Who's not going to accept me? Who's going to put me down? It was just this like looming feeling around me. And that became my norm. So when I was living this way, and this was like, I mean, obviously this is like elementary school, junior high, high school, college, getting out of college, still living in my safety identity, right? And what I want to share with you is that this is a practice. (laughs) And these are the energetic frequency and codes that I embody each and every day to allow myself to live unapologetic, where then that becomes my new norm. And I'm sharing this with you because so many of us think like, okay, yes, I'm embodying, it's happening, ha, ha, ha. And then we have these thoughts come in, these thoughts that are kind of like woven into our safety identity where we'll openly express ourselves and then we'll be like, are they judging me? Why is no one talking? What's happening? Did they not like that? What I want to share with you when I share this, I'm laughing. I share this with my clients all of the time. It's that your thoughts are just thoughts. And if you've been listening to the pod a lot recently, you're like, God damn it, Kelly, you say this all the time. I share this with you because I need to hear this every freaking day. Your thoughts are just thoughts. What you get to do is choose to believe your thoughts and continue to protect yourself and operate out of your safety identity, or we can choose to see your thoughts as another individual, as its own persona, as its own being, right? And you can separate yourself from it. You can choose to not believe your thoughts. You can choose to not walk the path of your thoughts, which do take you back into your safety identity, which do take you back into old habits, beliefs, patterns, keeping you stuck, keeping you stagnant, taking you back into the, I don't know who I am anymore, right? So when a thought comes your way, It's almost to me, I like to think of it as just like, it's just a gentle reminder that I am at choice and I have the power to choose to not believe my thoughts and to continue living my life for me, embodied in the frequency as my true unapologetic self, right? So that's a choice and a decision you get to make every single day as many times during the day as you'd like. So I just want to share that with you to know and remind you, thoughts do come in, especially when we are expanding, especially when we are allowing ourselves to kind of like energetically expand into the next level or into the next version of our true selves, our essence, our soul frequency, thoughts are going to come your way. And so I want to share a little bit why that happens is because We are so used to living that old way, living in that old way of being that was dripping with fear, judgment, looming feelings of who's going to accept me, who's going to like me, oh no, they don't like me, second guessing ourselves, doubting ourselves, shitting all over ourselves with fear, seeking, searching, waiting, all those frequencies, right? That right now may be your norm. That may be your quote unquote normal way of being. So when we start to step outside of that heavy way of being that is tainted with struggle, scarcity, and lack, when we start to step outside of that, it's almost like you're stepping into the unknown. And so many of us are like, this is the unknown. There there is no certainty here. I don't know what's going to happen. It feels out of my control. So maybe this feels very scary. Maybe this feels very fearful. Maybe this isn't for me. And we go back into that old way of being that feels very normal to us and feels very safe to us, right? So you may be on the threshold right now of that bridge 
of stepping, walking over that bridge from this old way of being into this new way of being that's very, very supportive of who you are and who you came here to be. This is where the magic lies. I say this and share this all of the time, right? And so you get to choose to walk that bridge into this new way of being. And I don't even want to say new way of being because truthfully, it's a way of being that is meant for you. It's meant for you. It is so supportive. It is so in alignment with who you are. It's literally the vortex of expansion. It's the vortex of holy shit. This is where my dreams, my desires, my manifestations are. I've just been over here in my safety identity, living in this fear bubble of self-doubt and judgment and shoulds, right? And it's almost like I've been resisting this way of being that's meant for me, that's in true, true, total and complete alignment with my soul that feels so light and feels so free. And so another thing that I feel called to share with you is that when we are walking over that bridge and entering into this new way of being, right? You're going to feel fear. You're going to feel fear, but fear doesn't mean that it's a no. Maybe you've learned that that feeling of fear is a no. It's not. There's a difference between fear that you feel that's like, holy fuck, this is like, you know, like something bad's going to happen. I'm going to die. There's that kind of fear. That's like the protection intuition where it's like, do not take this way. This is not going to be like actually physically safe for you. And then there's that fear where it's like, okay, I'm doing something new. This feels unsafe. (laughs) This feels uncertain. I'm not sure, but it's going to be okay. There is a separation and a fine line between those two fears. I feel that we just learn that fear is like a holy shit protection mechanism. Don't do this. It's unsafe, right? That unsafety is is this going to physically harm me? Or is this like, I feel unsafe because this is unknown, this is uncertain, but I'm safe because I'm safe, so it's gonna be okay. And I trust myself enough to walk this path untraveled, right? And I wanna share with you, and I'm hearing very loudly, just because you didn't travel this path in this lifetime, doesn't mean that you haven't traveled this path before in a different lifetime. So if you've done it before, you can do it again. It's simply just trusting yourself and it's trusting in what's on the other side. And what's on the other side is what's meant for you. That is complete freedom. And I'll share more of that in a second. (laughs) I'm laughing because what was just channeled there was like totally its own, its own podcast. I love that. Okay. So going back to what I was talking about when I was living this way of this old way of being, this learned, this programmed, this conditioned way of being in my safety identity. What I was doing is that I was hiding who I really am and I was suppressing, suppressing like deep down my silly, sassy, magical nature. I was suppressing her so strongly What I was then doing is I was attracting shitty ass relationships and friendships. And if I can just share with you what shitty relationships I attracted in college, romantic and friendships, oh my God. But again, when you're suppressing your true self and showing up and expressing yourself from your safety identity to be perceived a certain way, you're not showing up as you. So you're going to attract the people, the relationships from that version of you, right? And then I was working in toxic environments. I was working in really shitty jobs that were putting me down, that were dimming my light even deeper. And then when I started my business as a yoga teacher, I was literally building it from a box of how I thought I needed to do it, how I thought I should show up, what would feel good for others. It was never about me. It was never about (laughs) the expression of me. It was all about building my business from a box of shoulds and have tos, right? So I didn't know then that I was living out of alignment. 
I didn't know. I was like, what? I'm just living life. How you're supposed to live life. This is what you're supposed to do. I didn't know. What then began to happen is, I don't know if this was around the time that Instagram came out or, I mean, Facebook was around for a long, long time. I don't really know what it was, but something in my energy shifted. And in my vortex, I began to start to see people who were living their life free as fuck, having the time of their lives and just like feeling good, being who they are and expressing themselves. And let me just share you, when I first saw that, I was like, who the fuck are you? (laughs) I was so triggered. I was triggered. And so all these thoughts were like, who the fuck are you? How is it so easy for you? Why am I in these like shitty friendships and these shitty ass jobs? Why am I living my life this way, right? And so what was happening was that by these people, women who are showing up in their soul essence and just enjoying the fuck out of their life, what they were doing was simply shining their light and then in turn, it shone a light on my resistance to myself. It was almost like a mirror to me not taking action on my true desires. It was a mirror to me being like, uh, Kelly, this is what life can be. And you're choosing to live your life in your safety identity, dripping and filled with fear, self-doubt, second guessing, shoulds, forcing, trying, struggle, scarcity, lack. (laughs) It was like a slap in the fucking face, right? It was like a wake up call. And of course, because I was already in resistance to myself, I was in resistance to this way of being. I was like, no, it can't be that easy. No, no, they're just like lucky. They're just special. But I was intrigued. And so I followed that curiosity and I began to feel if this is possible for other people and they're really living their life in their fullest expression of them, creating their life on purpose, if they can fucking do it, then it's possible for me. Little by little, because I still had resistance, I began to do the inner work, right? I made these energetic shifts and slowly but surely, I began to chip away at my old conditioning. I uncovered my safety identity of how I was showing up and expressing myself in a way that was pleasing others, in a way where I wasn't valuing myself, I wasn't seeing myself, I wasn't standing strong in my self-worth. I really uncovered that in all areas of my life of how I was showing up in my safety identity, right? And then I began to really define and align with my soul essence identity of who I am and who I came here to be. And I began to break free. I began to like become unbound, right? And that feels so light and that feels so nourishing and that feels expansive, becoming unbound. And so if you are in my energy, I know that you desire to live unapologetically in alignment with you. Your soul craves it. My soul craved this for years and years and years. And I'm here to tell you it's possible and you are 1,000 million percent capable. So this work that I have embodied is potent and I have the codes to get you there. And what I wanna share with you is that when you begin to really integrate these codes and allow yourself to show up unapologetically as you, embodied in your soul essence identity, What begins to happen is that you attract loving and supporting relationships that are meant for you, that light you the fuck up where you feel seen, heard, and it feels so safe to be you. That is key right here, feeling safe being you, right? And then you begin to feel unbound. It's like you energetically cut these effing cords that were keeping you tied down in your safety identity. You begin to free yourself as you express your soul essence with confidence and certainty. You then embody the leader that you truly are. You share your gifts, your talents, your magic in your career and in your business with 
ease. This is where you begin to see yourself. When you see yourself, others see you. Others value you. Others really feel your energy because you see yourself, because you value yourself. It literally all starts with you. You begin to create from a place of purpose, feeling fulfilled, whole, and complete in who you are and who you came here to be. This way of being will become your new norm. This way of living in alignment will become so easy, natural, and effortless to you, right? And so what I want to share is that this came through yesterday really, really loudly, and I wrote it down in my notes to make a graphic out of it because I was like, let her be seen. When you are in resistance to expressing yourself, when you are in resistance to who you are, When you are resisting yourself, you are in a state of resistance to everything, right? And so when we are living and operating out of our, out of our safety identity and resisting ourselves, that's why relationships don't feel support, supportive and nourishing. That's why your career and business may not feel supportive and nourishing. And when I say supportive and nourishing, I mean like really allowing your gifts, your talents, your skills that only you possess to be shared with the world, right? Other areas of your life can feel really out of balance, can feel really just like, what the fuck is happening? And this all stems from resisting ourselves. So you get to make that choice today. You get to choose to accept yourself, to let yourself be free, to let yourself be seen and heard in who you are and who you came here to be. This way of being is fucking everything. Everything. This way of being is safe. It is so safe. And whatever what I want to remind you This safety piece is you are safe because you are safe. You're not safe because you've been protecting yourself from fear of judgment, not being liked, not being accepted. You are safe because you are safe, right? You get to detach those meanings, those rules that you place around how you think or believe that you need to show up and express yourself in order to achieve, receive X, Y, and Z. You get to break free from those rules and meanings and just know I'm safe because I'm safe. I am safe because I am safe. And when I choose to see myself and all of my magic and all of my gifts and all of my skills, oh my God, the life, (laughs) the life that you have been desiring for yourself literally flies, flies into your aura, into your reality. It is an energetic decision that starts with you. And I'm so excited because these are the codes, the energetic frequencies that I share in the Unapologetically You Masterclass coming up on March 21st. I am hosting it live at 12 p.m. Love the live component, love being in your energy. And then the replay will go right into the vault so you will have lifetime access to this masterclass. I know that a meditation is going to come through to allow you to really define and align with your soul essence frequency. We're going to uncover them and allow yourself to really open yourself up to receive the soul supportive relationships, to receive and be the being that you came here to be in your career, in your business, and to embody the leader that you came here to be. It's going to feel so effing good. It's going to be potent as fuck. I am so excited to share these codes with you. I'm going to pop the link in the show notes. That is happening soon, my love. And remember, you'll have lifetime access. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, I can already feel this energetic shift happening for you. It is so freaking exciting. And what's going to happen in the masterclass is going to be... So juicy, so fucking expansive, and I'm so excited to welcome you in. And I just want to remind you, if you have been loving this pod, 
This is your invitation to take it off the pod and to come into my world. This masterclass is only one 11 angel numbers, making this super, super accessible for you to come in, to embody these codes and to really begin to show up in your soul essence identity, creating from a place of purpose, feeling free, fulfilled and complete in you. Oh, your life is going to massively shift and expand and transform. You are safe because you are safe. I cannot wait to see you in Unapologetically You Masterclass, my love. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Please, please, please share any nuggets of wisdom that landed with you today. I would love to hear because you know when I channel, I don't even remember what comes through and what's shared. So please share with me. I want to hear all about your expansion, all about allowing yourself to come deeper into alignment with you. And if you want to go deeper, come into Unapologetically You, my love. It is going to be oh, so fucking magic. I love you so, so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Mwah.